Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is going to be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in in some metro areas, in my opinion, are already turning into a buyer's market, especially when it comes to new build homes. Now, one of the signs that is essentially surging right now, or one of the trends that is surging right now that is telling us that we're headed into a buyer's market is the surging amount of contract cancellations. And you guys, canceled contracts is a very, very big problem for the industry like mortgage companies and realtor companies because a tremendous amount of work is generally done before they even get to that point. So essentially what it's doing is it's wasting time, it's wasting money. But here's the thing. I personally, I think that if you're a buyer on the sidelines and you want to walk away, obviously understand your purchase contract, but it's okay to walk away. Remember that, okay? It's okay to walk away. We're talking about the biggest financial transaction of most people's lives. Now, remember this, we are coming out of one of the record hottest real estate markets. And in just three to six months, we are already seeing signs of a buyer's market. So again, you guys, what that should demonstrate to you is how fake and how fragile our current economy is, the world economy, and especially our housing market. And why is it that way? Obviously COVID, right? And all of the trillions and trillions of dollars that was pumped in to our economy. Obviously, we're going to have to pay for that, right? And, and now we see that in play. But regardless, you guys, we're going to unpack an article from Zillow titled, More Pinning Homes Are Falling Through, But No Need to Sound the Alarms. And Zillow, we know that you're not going to sound the alarms despite the need to, right? Despite our dependence or many people's dependence on your forecasting, we know you're not going to sound the alarm. Now, you guys know that this is my personal YouTube channel. I am not your financial advisor, even if I want to be your financial advisor. And some people I want to help, you know, so tremendously. But the thing is, guys, I'm not a financial advisor. This is my personal YouTube channel. And for all the efforts that I'm doing for my video a day or two videos a day, please, you guys like this video, subscribe if you haven't, and do me a huge favor, you guys, comment below. I absolutely love your comments. You know that, but let's get started in this article right now. So here's the three points that they want to talk about. The share of contract cancellations, pending listings that have gone back on the market without a sale has recently increased, but remains in line with pre-pandemic norms. And again, it should, you guys, because here's the thing. Again, we're coming out of a red hot housing market right? The fact that we're already where we're at right now is astonishing. Here's the second bullet point. The recent increase in contract cancellations is more evidence of a rebalancing in the housing market that has both eased buyer demand and given buyers who remain in the market more negotiating power than they had for most of the pandemic. A greater share of lower priced homes has fallen out of contract than higher priced homes. This likely reflects affordability challenges taking their toll on buyers with relatively low incomes as mortgage rates have risen. So again, you guys, you know, maybe it's just me. It could be just me, but let me know. Comment below. Do you notice any change in Zillow's attitude? Do you think they're more cautious? But I'm really curious to know what you guys think. So do me a favor, guys. Comment below. Let me know so far how you feel their attitude is. And if it changes, let's get back to the article right now. A quickly rebalancing housing market brought about by sharp increases in mortgage rates that have pushed monthly payments beyond what many can afford has caused home buyers and sellers to reset their expectations. One outcome of these rapidly changing conditions and shifting expectations is a recent increase in the share of pending homes that fell through. As of the end of August, the share of pending home sales that fell through then ended up back on the market measured weekly had increased by 0.8% to 2.8% from the beginning of the year. Put differently, about one of every 36 pending homes fell through in the last week in August compared to about one in 50 at the beginning of the year and one out of every 45 at the end of last August. So you guys can see that it's obviously picking up pretty significantly. There are a number of reasons why pending home sales would fall through. Quickly rising mortgage rates will likely causing some buyers to move from being able to afford a mortgage on the home they bid on. 
to not being able to afford that mortgages as the cost exceeds their allowable limit for a debt to income ratio. And again, you guys, you know, this is what I've been saying because we have stricter lending standards, the debt to income ratio is massively impacted by interest rate increases. Whereas back in 2008, you can state your income increases like this could, you know, would basically not affect your loan, right? It would affect your payment, obviously, which, you know, should affect you, but it didn't affect the loan qualification if you went stated income which is astonishing. Affordability is likely a major reason why contracts fall, especially as more lower price pending homes end up back on the market than other price tiers. So obviously guys, what this means is affordability, like I've been screaming for, I don't know, six months now, affordability has been the biggest factor at changing our housing market, our tra at transitioning our housing market. Unaffordability is coming from two things, obviously overvalued prices, but where it's really coming from as well is the massive increase in interest rates. Because remember, just a few months ago, right, just a, you know, a year ago, we were getting interest rates in the 2%. So we can't go from one year to one year and have our mortgage payments go up 50%. So one, you know, almost 50%. So year over year, almost 50% increase on average for mortgage payments. Y'all, you guys know you don't have to be a scientist or an economist to know that that increase of 50% is obviously it is not sustainable. It's not sustainable. I mean, look at the chart. Look at this chart from Fred right now. All right. So here's Fred economic data, guys. And, and, and what I really want to point out is look at, you know, look at the two percents. I mean, we were in the two percents for so long, you guys. And two percent, I mean, it should have never been that long. It started in about... 2020, I mean, look at this, you know, pretty much the most of the year, well, they were low 3% mid 2020, and they just stayed at 2%. Look at this. I mean, it was just crazy. Then they went up a little bit in the beginning of 2021 to 3.18. But again, they went down shortly after that to, to under 3%. I mean, look at this, guys. I mean, this is insane all the way till almost the end of 2021. So when you go from this low of interest rates, I mean, 2%, you know, you know, up high 2%, low 3%, and then you skyrocket up like this, obviously it's going to shake loose and it's going to trim the fat, right? Obviously it's going to impact prices. Obviously things are going to get unaffordable. It doesn't take a rocket science to understand that. And this skyrocket here needed to happen because quite frankly, the Federal Reserve was late to the party and they should have started the tightening back in 2021 because they didn't. We're all rug pulled, right? Everyone is rug pulled, private, personal people, corporation, businesses, almost everyone got rug pulled here, right? I mean, this is crazy, crazy stuff, but let's hop back into the article right now. Another cause of contract cancellations could be from buyers taking back control of negotiating power. Competition for homes has eased as many buyers have taken a step back from the market. Inspections and other contingencies are no longer being waived to the same degree as earlier in the pandemic, thank goodness. A failed inspection or any questionable finding might be leading to more contracts falling through. Now, while desperate buyers may have been more willing to go through with risky purchases when competition was at a fever pitch earlier in the pandemic. Regardless of why a deal failed to close, the recent increase in this dynamic is yet more evidence of how the housing market has quickly shifted in recent months and more evidence that perhaps well-off buyers are really able to more to be more choosy in this market now that competition is less of a concern and are less keen to jump on home on a home simply because it's available. So do you guys notice the attitude change in Zillow where it used to be oh home prices are going to go up 19% this year, they're going to go up in 2023. Do you now noticing them talk about how buyers are kind of taking back the market, sellers are suffering, the market's transitioning? Thank God, Zillow, thank God, better late than never. But, you know, again, we need big companies like this, even though we can't really trust them. We need them to sound the alarm. They have a way bigger touch than someone like me, for example. So, so far, you know, I like what I'm reading. Comment below. Let me know how you feel about it. But let's finish up the article right now. And here's what's really interesting, you guys. Now, let me explain what this chart is. And this is what it says on top. A greater share of lower priced homes have fallen out of contract than higher priced homes. So essentially what this is saying is lower priced homes are falling out at a pace of 3.4%, while top tier are falling out at a rate of 2.3%. So at first I was trying to figure out, you know, what does that mean? You know, 
And, you know, frankly, what it means is that's really bad because it's going to, you know, the, the lower tiered houses generally have buyers at a lower tier of income. So when you're at a lower tier of income, any adjustments in interest rates and any adjustments in prices drastically affects your loan qualifications. And I think that's what we're seeing here. Now, while the higher priced homes generally, you know, maybe you're a millionaire, you have a whole bunch of money, maybe you can afford to put 20% down. And when you make an offer and it's accepted, generally you're more committed and more financially able to purchase because it's a higher priced house. Now, personally, I don't, you know, even if I could afford it, I don't want a million dollar house. Do you know how awful it is to clean those things? I mean, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. I just want a, a nice house for my wife and children, right? That's it. But again, it's very interesting how the differences play out when it comes to low price versus high price. Now let's look at the top metro areas right now. So this is the hottest pandemic markets that are seeing more intense cooldowns. So it starts with Salt Lake City, Utah at 2.5%. And you guys know I try to do a breakdown of Salt Lake City, Utah, but I could not get the data from Redfin and Zillow's data didn't make sense. So, you know, I, I want more information on Salt Lake City, Utah, and I don't understand why I can't get it. Very concerning, but number one is at Salt Lake City, Utah. Number two, Dallas, which is a huge surprise. Number three, Atlanta, Georgia. And Atlanta, Georgia has a massive problem with investor demand. And I believe these metro areas with the highest investor demand are going to be the most likely to crash, maybe minus certain places in Florida. Florida is just in, in a disaster of itself. But number four is Las Vegas. I've covered Las Vegas, San Antonio. Uh, after that is Jacksonville, followed by Sacramento, California. It's nice to see California on there. Nashville after that. Denver, Los Angeles, Phoenix. Obviously, Phoenix is in big trouble, you guys. Phoenix is also going down in rent, which can be a complete catastrophe. I actually just watched a video from Reventure on Phoenix. It's bad in Phoenix. It's real bad. And I did a report on Phoenix. I can confirm it's awful. Followed by Birmingham, Alabama, Riverside, California. Pretty surprised Riverside's on there and not San Diego, but it is what it is. Followed by New Orleans and then beautiful, beautiful Florida at Orlando. So the good thing is, is and I covered these, Jacksonville and Orlando are making the list. So we're starting to see, you know, Florida show signs of unraveling, which is exactly what we need in Florida because it's in pretty bad shape. Now, overall, there's two things that I want to conclude on. The first thing is it's going to be very, very interesting to see how all of these radical trends and radical adjustments in the housing market, it's going to be interesting to see how the lack of inventory is going to counter that. Because quite frankly, if we had hyper inventory right now, the whole housing market would explode. It would actually implode and start melting down. So it's going to see how powerful all of these other trends are going to be against that low inventory issue that we have right now. So keep your eyes on the inventory. Keep your eyes on the prices. Now, I don't believe we're going to need excess inventory to start seeing lower prices because, quite frankly, the house prices went up way too fast and broke all fundamentals. Now, the last thing that I want to conclude on you guys is double down right now because probably more than likely some of the best buying opportunities that we experience in our lifetimes are going to be in 2023. Now, if I were to guess when the bottom of the market is going to hit, first of all, I'm not trying to time the bottom of the market. I really don't know when the bottom of the market is going to hit because there's too many factors at play here, especially politics. But I would guess the winter of 2023. I think that, you know, the bottom is possibly going to either hit the winter of 2023 or the winter of 2024. Now, I believe what's also possible is, is it's going to be a slow bleeding process. I believe that we're going to have a massive crash in prices in 2023, starting at the end of this year. So I believe what's going to happen after that initial price adjustment is either home values are going to be sideways for quite some time and have slow growth or home values are going to be sideways and have downward slow growth for quite some time. So it's going to be really interesting to see. But the other thing, guys, is I just don't feel like we're going to have two to four, four years of buying opportunities like we did in the 2008 great financial crisis because the huge investors are getting ready. They're, they're gearing up. Blackstone's getting $50 billion ready. So in other words, you guys, prepare right now so that we're not left on the sidelines. You see what I'm saying? So if you're on the sidelines like me, perfect opportunity to start empowering yourself right now. Now guys, I really hope you got some value from this video. And if you're out there investing in real estate, I do wish you luck and I hope you win.